Alright guys, went back today with another high value and budget 9mm and this one is pretty slick because it's a direct copy of a Browning High Power made by Gerson. The model number is MCP35 and it's a classic Browning High Power design imported by EAA. EAA was nice enough to send this out to the channel at my request and I've been reviewing a lot of their imported guns lately and they've been really sending over some impressive copies, clones, and original designs and all of them seem to work amazing especially at the price they're offering. This is definitely a high value company that really specializes in a wide variety of 9mm handguns and a few other guns that they're importing. You can get all of that information on their website. So right off the bat, why would you want something like this? Well, it allows you to acquire a Browning high power handgun yet not at that browning crazy prices. When you're looking at historic farms or even some of the modern reproductions and the new FN gun, you're looking at about $1,000, maybe even more, maybe a little bit less, but the MSRP on the Gerson comes in at $546, making it incredibly affordable and a very functional shooter down at the range. Now in the box, it comes with a handgun itself, a cleaning brush, and one magazine. And that's my first complaint with this handgun though, is the fact that it only comes with one magazine. I would even like to see them charge a little bit more for the handgun and send a second mag, just because I feel like most people at least want two mags, even just for range handguns. With that being said though, it wasn't very difficult to find mags. At the local gun shop, I did the transfer of Beltway Gun and Pond in Matthews, North Carolina. They had two 15 round Metgar mags that were identical. And this is the model number on those Metgar mags. Try to focus in for you guys if you wanna know mag compatibility. This worked out perfectly in this handgun. So I grabbed uh, two extras. So I have three total magazines and boy, did we put them to use down at the range. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to Callaway Ballistics for sponsoring the ammo for this video. I shot a lot more than I thought I was going to because this was such a fun gun down at the range. Callaway Ballistics has a code 704 Tactical for free shipping on ammo orders over $200. They just did some price drops on some ammunition, and they've got some of the cleanest burning subsonic 9mm I've seen, as well as subsonic 300 Blackout, and even some 9mm Reman at incredibly affordable prices. And we put a ton of rounds through this gun, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in the reliability section of this review. So now that we've got most of the kind of housekeeping out of the way, let's take a look at the gun. And when you pick it up, you feel like you're holding a classic Browning high power. The other cool thing is the grips are interchangeable with classic Browning high power grips. So you're able to really customize it to fit your needs. And they have three different colors, the black, the two-tone, and the tan. I was a big fan of the black and the two-tone, and the black is what they sent out to the channel. This one has an ambidextrous safety. So for all those righties and lefties out there, it works out perfectly for you. Now the mag release though is, or the slide release though, is just on the left side right here. And overall, the controls are incredibly ergonomic. One downfall to this gun though, and I wanna make sure it's clear one more time, 
is that it does have a magazine disconnect. So that's my second complaint about the gun. And you're going to stop hearing complaints about after this point because everything else is darn near perfect about this copy. Now, the magazine disconnect, though, is a true representation of a lot of the Browning high powers, and I believe it's removable. And once you remove it, the mag should drop free. Now, the mags drop free when the slide is closed, but they do not necessarily drop free. Well, this one's not. They do not necessarily drop free uh, when the slide is unlocked. And I believe that has a lot to do with the magazine disconnect. So that's a little bit frustrating. I may be removing this, but for the purposes of the video, I left it in because I wanted to review it as it comes. The grips themselves that come with the farm are actually very ergonomic. It guides your thumb right where it needs to be to access your controls, and your thumb stays out of the way of the controls while shooting. You don't really ride over the top of this like a 1911 because you're going to start getting slide bite and hammer bite. So I kind of guide where my hand should go into the grips and then actuate the controls. It's very easy to flip off and stay out of the way no issues whatsoever and dropping that slide release has a really nice shelf and texturing that's easy to grab but it doesn't get in the way the mag release works well again but the mags don't drop free so it's rather frustrating for tactical and speed reloads so that maybe removing that magazine disconnect would help out with that a lot now overall the sight picture is interesting it's got two square blocks in the back and a square block on the front Overall, that doesn't affect me, but just something to consider. It's a little bit different, but the sights are interchangeable, so it's not that big of a deal. The hammer itself has some nice texturing on there. So again, we can't can't drop the can't drop the gun or can't drop the hammer unless the mag is in there. So make sure it's clear. And now we can drop the hammer. And since this is a single action only firearm, if you did decock it, you'll have to recock the hammer to make it fire because it only fires in single action mode. Let's move up and take a look at this trigger. So you have a kind of gritty and spongy feel on the trigger at first, and that may be, again, interfering with some of that magazine disconnect. But once you hit the wall, it's a very crisp, clean break, although it's a little bit heavier trigger. And I'm going to try to do this, make sure it's clear to show you guys the reset. The reset on this gun is a little bit long, a little bit gritty, but then you have that gritty take up again. You can definitely feel it. Hits a wall, but a nice, crisp, and clean break. Overall, I really like the trigger. I feel like with a little bit of work on that and the magazine disconnect, you'd have a perfect trigger system and mag system. But those are something to consider that are not my favorite, but overall do really well. I felt a lot worse triggers on a lot of other handguns, so this is by far uh, no means the worst trigger. But once you really get into it and once you start shooting fast, I shoot this gun incredibly fast, and you don't even notice that trigger whatsoever. You definitely come to that wall, you hit that wall, and, and it's almost no recoil whatsoever since it's a steel-framed gun and a steel slide gun. It just mitigates that recoil, and you can absolutely rattle off follow-up shots, as you can see in the intro, and just really dump rounds. I actually shoot this a lot faster than a lot of other handguns that I specifically have for competition. It's just something about the ergonomics, something about the recoil impulse, and something about the way that trigger flows just while you're running it quickly makes this thing an incredibly fast shooter with no issues uh, whatsoever for speed uh, shooting. So if you wanted to use this for competition, I feel like it could definitely fill that role again once you resolve the magazine drop free issue. Now, taking a look at this gun, it would be a little bit difficult me to recommend this for personal defense just because it doesn't have a pick rail up front for a light or a laser, but then that starts taking away from the classic Browning high power design. What I'd really recommend this handgun for was somebody who wants a classic handgun, yet something that can also double as a role for a range gun or even training or teaching newer shooters or somebody who is recoil sensitive. This handgun is going to work out perfectly, again, because it's reasonably accurate, super easy to shoot, the controls are incredibly nice and easy to access, and the recoil is almost non-existent, and it was 100% reliable down at the range. I actually ran about two to three boxes of the Callaway Ballistics remanufactured ammo, a box of the subsonic Callaway Ballistics ammo, 147 grain, and two boxes of Tola steel cased ammo, bringing the total right around to about 250, 300 rounds with not a single issue whatsoever. Now, this is just the first shots video, and I'll be doing an update in the future. Maybe even check out the YouTube shorts on this gun. I'm going to go back down and shoot it some more. But overall, it was 100% functional. The ejection pattern was great. Uh, it wasn't weak at all, even with the weaker powered steel cased ammo, and it fed, functioned 
beautifully. No issues whatsoever. I'm a big fan of this handgun. I think you'll like it too. Just remember some of those subtle points I talked about throughout this review before making your decision. All of the information will be in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.